If we have our Bibles, can we kindly turn to the book of Acts, chapter 1. And I know you guys wanted me to go to Luke, but let me start by Acts, Acts chapter 1. And then I'll jump to Luke chapter 24. But let's start, Cynthia, Acts chapter 1 from verse 6 to verse 11. Acts chapter 1, 6 to 11. And then we're going to jump over to Luke. When they were together for the last time, they asked, Master, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel now? Are you going to do what? Restore the kingdom of Israel now. Now. Okay. So there was a mission in, the, in his descending. Um, there was a question that has been asked. Are you going away for a reason? Let's, let's just get something clear about ascension. What is your reason for departing? Why don't you stay? So they asked him a question. Now let's continue. Is this the time? Is this the time? He told them. He told them. You don't get to know the time. Ah, powerful. You don't get to know the time. Okay. Right. Timing is the master's or the father's business. Timing is the father's business. Right. What you get is the Holy Spirit. Oh, my God. What you get is the Holy Spirit. So there's something that's happening here in Acts chapter 1. The power of the Holy Spirit could not come if he did not ascend. Yes. Hello? So we need to understand that. So there is a pause. Why in Ascension Day? After the crucifixion, I think it's very clear. We're going to debate the whole day about it. Was it 49 days straight after that or was it 50 days? I'm not in the debate whether it was 49 days, whether it was 50 days. All that I know, after that, the 50 days after that, he had to ascend. That's imperative for me. So no debate concerning 49 days, 50 days. I just came to tell you he ascended. It's imperative to me. Right. Let's continue. And when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You'll be able to be my witnesses. My God. He's giving them a very clear answer. After I descend, something's going to happen. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. Well, I've got good news for everybody that's seated here this morning that we are waiting for the encounter of the Holy Ghost that is about to come down. He went up, but something needs to come down. And I firmly believe that that already happened. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Is there somebody that can agree with me? He went away, but not to stay. He's coming back again. And we all understand that when he left, he had to send something back. Hallelujah. And that was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to touch on Acts chapter 2. Because we know and we do understand there was a waiting. A period of a waiting to be empowered. Right. Let's continue. You will be able to be my witnesses you will be able to be my witnesses in Jerusalem in Jerusalem all over Judea all over Judea and Samaria and Samaria even the ends of the world even the ends of the world these were his last words that was his last words right as they watched he was taken up and disappeared in a cloud they stood there staring into the empty sky suddenly two men appeared in white robes mm. they said you galileans why do you just stand here looking up at this an is empty this sky? is where my message is coming stop wondering and this is why i brought my title to this 
Stop wondering. He has ascended. Amen. Let's not debate about it. He has ascended. There will always be people that will try and speak you out of it. But I came to give you some good news. Jesus has ascended. Amen. Right? And then... This very Jesus, this very Jesus, who was taken up from among you to heaven, yeah, will come, will come, as certainly as mysterious and mysteriously oh my as he God. I need to tell someone he is coming back again. He went away, but not to say he is coming back again. If I'm you, you tap your neighbor, tell your neighbor, my God, so many words and so many messages I can preach from just that chapter. Because there's so many promises made in that chapter that Jesus is coming back again. He went away, but not to stay. He's coming back again. What did he go do? Why was the disciple so concerned? Why is it that you have to go? He needs to go and prepare a place. My God, is there somebody that understands me? He's gone to go prepare a place. Mighty Jesus. And he's preparing that place for me and you. But he did not leave us just like that. He made 100% sure. That there's someone that's coming after ye left. And that is the Parakletos. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had to come down. And the Holy Spirit had to fall on the church of God. You cannot become a witness. Because this was the thing. I'm going away but I'm going to make you witnesses. Of this great thing that's happening right now I'm gonna ascend up into heaven but I'm making you the witness but listen to me I'm not gonna make you just a witness I'm gonna make you a powerful witness you're gonna carry something on you that no man will be able to deny and that will be the baptism of the Holy Spirit come I tell you something the Holy Ghost came down it was not long after he departed to go up into heaven then he sent down the Holy Spirit I came to say the whole place was filled with the Holy Spirit and all of them started speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance I came to say to the church it's time to become drunk again of the Holy Ghost it's time to get the baptism of the Holy Ghost back in our lives and the glory of God to come down again is there somebody that can be a witness with me that the church needs to be empowered again come I help you here today Jesus just didn't leave no he left with a mission there was a mission behind his leaving I have to send the paracletos I have to send the Holy Ghost I can't just go I need to leave them with something because they're gonna become my witnesses so I need to endure them with Holy Ghost power to become my witness now let's quickly just sit down let me just first not lose my message let me get stick into what I want to stick let's go to the book of Luke dr. Luke chapter 24 verse 51 or from 50 he then led them out of the city and he led them out of the city uh -huh. over to Bethany yeah raising his hands he blessed them wait a minute what did he do raising his hands yeah he blessed them he what blessed them he what blessed them he blessed them he raised his hands and he what? He blessed, blessed them. them. 
I need you to understand something. Before he went into heaven, he left a blessing with the children of God. You know, when God starts blessing you, you can't count the amount of blessings that goes with his blessing. Um, just one word from the Lord is so powerful. It causes shakes. It causes things to happen so quick and so fast. So there's something that the Lord did before he ascended. He first blessed them. My God. And then what happened? And while blessing them. And while blessing them. Took his leave. Took his what? His leave. Yeah. Being carried up to heaven. Being carried out to heaven. I need to help someone. When he went to heaven, he didn't go to stay in heaven. He went away to prepare something in heaven. Uh, the new Jerusalem is being prepared for those that understands the significance of him leaving us after 50 days of the crucifixion the resurrection took place and 50 days after that he prepared to go into heaven listen that's where the work started now because now he needs to prepare the new jerusalem for those that believed that believed in the death the resurrection and the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ and then all of the sudden something is about to happen because God has prepared us but I need to get to something that is very significant concerning this whole thing he went before he went he had to first bless tell your neighbor before he left he had to bless no, no, no. Tell your neighbor before he left, he had to bless. Now, I just want to do something. I want to do something. If I can preach a little bit differently and we, we will display something about him leaving. But before I get there, let me quickly just show you something. Um, we all believe in ads. Now, I'm not shooting down any ad. But there's many people that put ads, right? You put an ad, if you want to lose weight, use this product. I don't have nothing against the products. Please, I'm going to repeat myself. It's not, I'm just displaying something. I just want to get to something. So I want to show you a product. And I want to ask you a question after the product. Is that okay? Can we play the ad quickly? If you're living with extra pounds, you think you'll never lose. Suffering with blood sugar imbalance, okay. low energy, joint pain, brain fog, or a slow metabolism, there is an ancient nutritional practice that may be the solution you've been looking for. The Keto Diet is an effective, transformational approach to meeting your body's nutritional needs, boosting your brain health, and tapping into its innate ability to burn fat as fuel. Right. Now... Quickly, just switch on. We'll go to the second one now. Let me quickly show you. Right. Okay, go, go, go ahead. Struggling to lose those extra kilos. Right. Weight goals are unique, so having choices makes all the difference. SlimFit has options to best suit your needs. SlimFit Calorie Reducer reduces calories from carbohydrates, sugars, and fats. Appetite Reducer, your hunger buddy to help control your appetite. SlimFit fruit flavor sachets make weight management taste good. Together, SlimFit can help you lose those extra kilos. Hallelujah. Hold on. Switch on. Now, it's strange. If you look at the ad, the ad speaks to you. Hello? Hello, someone? The ad speaks to you. So when you a little bit have a machi like mine, you will make sure that you watch the ad over and over and over and you say to yourself, I'm going to try this thing out. Is that true? 
Hello, hello, hello. Speak to me, everybody. Is that true? If they tell you you can have a six packs within six months, I mean, now really, you're gonna go for that tablet. You're gonna pay money for that tablet. You're gonna go out of your way to get that tablet because you want to look like the guy. Right? Is that right? So you believe in the ad. You believe in the ad. So the ad speaks for you and you believe the ad. And the way they make the ad. You feel you can more all I wait for Lord. You can go to sleep and as you upstand, you kick yourself. Yes, you so can not so. And the like I get, the like I get so far, guys, I've got away. I can't even go. Picky Peter, that next year, that next year. But as it you have to grow, you have to follow. So you start putting your trust in the tablet. To lose the weight, and sometimes it doesn't work because you can eat the green leaves for all I care the whole year through, and it seems like next can no any. Ah, you must have sugar come, you must have bread come, you must have rice come, you must have alles come. I don't know what you were on the eat, but alles is here rechne. You can't eat artifacts eat, because it's it's not good. It's too much starch. You can't eat that eat, and pasta because pasta is here rechne. It's also starch and rice is also starch. Here, Jesus, what we do is eat. So alles is forgiven. Now I want to help you. You believe in the ad. Now here is something I don't believe in the ad. I have witnesses that witness the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have witnesses that I can call and I can make reference to them that saw him departed. I know that he left and I know what he told them when he blessed them he didn't just leave them he blessed them now I want to know what did he bless them with because there's something that I need to discover if he left them with a blessing then I want to walk in the blessing that he left them with because this is real the ascension is real. As you believe in the head, I believe in his ascension. I believe he left the blessing. And I'm going to go to the blessing. Go for me to the blessings of God. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Give me now all that blessings. God zal ons Jy hoef nie bekommer te wees nie. We had the song on yesterday. It's causing revival right now in America. This very song, God zal vir die mosies. Did you ever think an African song can cause a revival? There's a revival in the United States because of the song, God sorry for the mosses. I can't do the word for you. The Lord is sorry for you. The Lord is here on for you. God is going to bless you. There will never, never be a dry moment in your life. Bread will be in overflow. The more you kneel, the more you will supply. The more you kneel, the more you will supply. The blessings of God is in overflow. You are blessed. Now he continues. He say, blessed shall you be when you come in. And blessed shall you be when you go out. 
the Lord will will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face hallelujah I came to tell every single person that's listening to my voice whether you are live stream whether you watch from work I came to give you a good word here today you are blessed hallelujah I came to tell you coming in going out you are blessed wherever you go the blessings are following you because do you know why he ascended with a mission what I love of him he didn't just ascend with a mission he blessed before he ascended that blessing is a big blessing that blessing speaks volumes. The year lost on snoid net alieni. Okay. The year lost on snoid alieni. I see an ons and then lost it. As the year da is, I see an and I'm for dahi. As you in the hospital bed, they see him as right on that way now. He's there to bless you. He's not here to harm you. Bless shall you be going in. Bless shall you be coming out. You are blessed. Do you know who you are? Do you know what you carry? You carry the blessing of the ascension. He blessed you. The abundant blessings of God that make it rich and adds no sorrow to you. And not just blessed you, He also gave you a door. That's why you can go in and out. I can go in, I can come out. Because there's an open door given to you. My God, let me just recap on some blessings. Because that's why the scripture is very clear concerning that. The Bible say, um, uh, whatever God has blessed, no man can curse. Man cannot curse what is blessed from God. When God has blessed, man cannot curse it. I'm going to say again, when God has blessed, man cannot curse it. When God has blessed, no demon can curse what is blessed. They can go to the Sangomas, but they can't. They can't. They can't change the blessing into a curse. They can't. Man, you need to understand who you are in Christ. When they want to curse you, the curse will turn into blessings. If they want to come up against you, God changes it into blessings. Because he blessed you before he left. He blessed you. Now you need to walk in the blessings that he blessed you with. I bless you. He released the word over you. That blessing almost sounds like, um, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide on each of us until the great day when Jesus appears on the cloud of glory. It almost seems like that was the blessing. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance before you. I think that is the blessings that was spoken over you. Now, if God talks about that, it means your countenance is blessed. Hallelujah. Your countenance is blessed. Jesus. Everything concerning you is blessed. Because God has blessed you. Before he left, he blessed you. And he didn't just leave. He told them, go wait for For me in the upper room, I'm going to send you now the Holy Spirit. 
that will lead you for the time that I'm not here. He will be leading you through your journey of life. And the Holy Spirit will guide you. And the Holy Spirit will convict you. Because I ascended into heaven, I went to go prepare the new Jerusalem for you. Because I'm coming back again. But in the interim, I'm leaving behind the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. I'm leaving Him behind. He's the one that will guide you. He's the one that's going to quicken you. He's the one that will lead you. My God, and when you wait upon Him, He's going to come down. And now if we go to the book of Acts chapter uh, chapter 2 the Bible say and they were all in one place with one accord and while they were waiting then all of the sudden the Spirit of God say there came down uh, uh, cloves of tongues uh, sitting like fire on the head of each and every single one of them and they all started speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance I came to say this is the time for the church to understand after the ascension is going to be the baptism of the fire that's coming back to the house of God I'm preparing myself for a baptism of fire are you ready for Pentecostal Sunday where the fire of God is going to burn on the church again are you waiting for the return Turn of the Holy Ghost and the baptism with fire whereby young children will start speaking in strange tongues as the Spirit of God falls on them and it will not be normal tongues it will be something that sounds like this that is how it's gonna be and the glory of God will fill the whole house I came to tell you we are preparing where the whole house will be filled with the same spirit our God is there somebody in this building that can feel what I'm feeling I feel for a baptism I feel for a Holy Ghost invasion I feel that the glory of God needs to come back like in the days of old like on Pentecost where the glory falls on everyone I'm looking forward for the baptism after the ascension there must be a promise of a baptism and the baptism is coming we are celebrating today his departure but I'm waiting now for the outpouring Must be an outpouring. There's two things. There's a blessing before the ascension. And there's an outpouring after the ascension. I'm already in the blessing. Jesus. I'm now waiting for the outpouring. Oh, Jesus, wait. I'm waiting for the outpouring. I'm waiting for the outpouring. EOM, I'm waiting for an outpouring. I don't know when it's coming, but it's coming. I don't know how it's going to come, but it's going to come. I don't know what day it's going to be, but it's going to be some special day where the glory of God will take over and the fire of God will burn on the altar. In the name of Jesus, I don't know who in this building is hungry for a move of God. I don't know who in this building is longing 
for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I don't know how many people in this building want an experience, but I came to tell you, let's celebrate today, for tomorrow's gonna even be better. Ah, uh, come on, somebody needs to hear me. Let's celebrate today. Let's celebrate the ascension. Because there's a promise with the ascension. There's a promise that needs to come back. And that promise is coming back. Stop wondering. Stop wondering when did he leave? How did he leave? How did it happen? He left with the cloud. But he's coming back with the cloud. Is there somebody that can hear me? He left with the cloud. He's coming back with the cloud. I came to tell you something. We are preparing for the return of God. The glory of God. The power of God. Where the bride of God will be endured with power again. Ah, come on somebody. I'm part of the bride. I can't wait for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I can't wait for the fire of God to burn from the altars again. I can't wait where God meet with his people through signs, wonders, and miracles. Come on now, church of God. That glory, that promise comes after the ascension. God will pour out his spirit on all flesh. The sons and the daughters will prophesy. I'm releasing the prophetic utterance of God upon the church of God like never before. This is the move we've been waiting for. 